Now we are getting to one of the crucial concepts within the organizational theory studies and that is the understanding between mechanistic structure and organistic structure. Well, but first I have to say, uh, these are sort of two fields or, or you, can, you can imagine it as a sort of a bipolar line. Now let me draw it. And, you know, companies are, you will most likely not find a company that has purely mechanistic structure or, or company that has purely organic structure. Well, you will find companies that are, you know, sort of leaning toward one of these directions. So uh, the, you come, let's say, to the army and you can say about the army that, well, this is more of a mechanistic structure. Or you will come to Google and you will say, well, this is more of an organic structure. So, and another thing I have to say in the beginning, neither of these are necessarily bad. They just they just fit into different industries uh, um, according to their characteristics. So don't think about any of these as a bad ones. Well, let's discover these two. So we have mechanistic structures. These are structures that are designed to induce people to behave in predictable and accountable ways. On the other hand, you have organic structures. These are structures that promote flexibility, so people initiate change and can adapt quickly to changing conditions. I think now you can see the very basic difference. On, under the mechanistic structure, you want people to behave in a very predictable ways. On the other hand, you have these organic structures where you would like to have some flexibility, change and some quick adaptations. Well, so let's look at some more concrete characteristics. Well, at first we have either individual specialization or joint specialization. And at least from my perspective or in my head, I remember both of these according to this first point. So under the mechanistic structure, we have something that we call individual specialization. And that is employees work separately and specialize in one clearly defined task. So let's say we draw a few tasks, one, two, and let me change a color. So we have tasks, one, two, three, four, ah, oh, let's say five. So these are our tasks. And the same we have right over here, and we will see the difference. One, two, three, four, five tasks. And then we have some employees. So we will have one employee, another, 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 and fifth one, and five employees over here as well. Now, as we have said, under the individual specialization, they will work separately and specialize in one task. So one employee, one task, and we can continue and attach one task to one employee. On the other hand, we have joint specialization. Employees work together and coordinate their actions to find the best way of performing tasks. So they are going to work together. So let's say that for the first task we have this employee right over here, this employee and then this one as well. So they are working together. Well, on the second task, let's say this one is working on second task, this one and this one. Then we have maybe this one and we can uh, put it together this way. And let me just finish the drawing. So I think you can clear, clearly see the difference. But as I have said, do not think about it sort of the unique way. There is most likely no company that is operating the purely mechanistic way and purely organic way. Of course, in reality, it can look like that there is some hint of organic structure within uh, uh, mechanistic organizations. But we had the first difference, individual specialization versus joint specialization. Now we have integrating mechanism. So in the mechanistic structure, we have simple integrating mechanism and that is hierarchy of authority is clearly defined and is the major integrating mechanism. So we have hierarchy of authority that is clearly defined. So what we need are managers that are supervising and monitoring our employees. So let's say this is the first manager and he has three um, subordinates. This is another manager having two subordinates. 
while let's say we are looking at the organic structures and we see here that we have complex integrating mechanism and it is task forces and teams are major integrating mechanism so we have to create some teams so let's create team right over here and team right over here so here we have something that we call teams so another quite big difference that you can see so here we have authority authority so but you can see that this fits the purpose we have these these guys are working together so we create team out of them and they can handle their tasks together now finally the biggest difference probably is in centralization and decentralization of authority so let's see authority to control tasks is kept at the top of the organization most communication is vertical so let's draw another manager who is right over here and he's overseeing these two managers and now we have um, communication that is vertical so that is like that well why is communication vertical right over here so let's say that a task comes in so let's say a task this task right over here comes in and it is being handled by um, by the lowest level employee but this employee is not sure if he should solve the task he says well this task is too important i should ask my manager or give it to give it to my manager so he comes and says hey my dear manager here you have a task that needs to be solved and the manager says okay i will try to take care about it but then he realizes well it's too important i will move it to our CEO and then now CEO makes the decision and starts to move it down again to the manager to the employee and then the task is being actually solved so this is the vertical sort of a communication and that is when the authority to control task is kept at the top of the hierarchy now let's look at the organic structures here we have decentralization and that is authority to control tasks is delegated to people at all levels in the organization and most communication is lateral so let's take a look let's say we have one ceo right over here who is overseeing all of these employees and now a task comes now a task comes as in the previous example right over here and it will be solved by the team because they are going to communicate in a in a lateral way so uh, we can we can also call it horizontal communication so they are discussing together so that they do not have to ask their CEO about how to handle this task so in this video we have introduced ourselves the mechanistic and organic structures and I'm sorry for a little bit a lot of text but uh, these are two really important and uh, quite complex concepts